Hello all, welcome to the 8th chapter of building a web application. In this chapter, we will learn how to implement a search functionality. In the last chapter, we learned about how to build a web application and built a library information management system. So far, we built a home page to show some static content, a form to register new readers and a table to show existing readers. Now, we will learn how to implement the search functionality to search existing readers based on their name. If we enter a name and click on search button, it should show only the readers matching our input. Shall we learn this? Let's go to the readers.html file where we have written the code for the readers tab. In this HTML file, let's find the search functionality lines where we have a form with role as search. This form has an input tag and a button tag. The input tag will take our search query. So, we will add a name argument to this input tag with name as query and a value tag with query specified within double brackets. This is to retain the search query after loading the search results. We will learn more about this very soon. So, now this input tag can take our search query and when we click on the search button, it should send our search query to the back end. Next, we will add an action argument in the form tag and we will give the URL as backslash readers. As we have learned before, the input we are providing inside the form will be going to the URL given in the action. Next, we will add the method argument with value as post as this is a post request to backend. So, when we click on the search button, the request will be going to the reader's API with the query that we have provided. We need to make some changes in our backend code to handle this request. We will go to the reader's endpoint handler in urls.py file. This routes us to readers underscore tab function present in the views.py file. Currently, it handles only get methods for now. But we need this method to handle post operations as well. So, we will add an if condition in this method. If space request.method equals get then execute existing code. If it is a get operation, which is basically accessing the page from a browser by clicking on the reader tab, we want to show all the readers. If it is a post operation, like a search, we need to filter the readers based on our query coming from the HTML. So let's write our else block with query equals request.post of query. This should get us the query entered by the user in the search field. Then we will write readers equals reader dot objects dot raw with a select query select star from limbs underscore app underscore reader where reader underscore name like our query coming from UI enclosed in percentage symbol. Django's raw operation allows us to execute SQL queries in models. Now, this should execute the query coming from the UI and get the readers that are matching this query. To return these readers to the UI layer, we will add the return statement similar to get. Just one more change in HTML. We will go to the readers.html file and add the CSRF token inside the form tag. This is to avoid CSRF token validation errors. Now, we are good to restart our application and see your changes. Let's refresh the page and see how it works. We will type the name Mark in the search field and click on search button. Now, we see only the reader Mark being displayed. If I type Apple, I see the Apple record displayed. Likewise, you can easily search any entry from here. But if you notice the search field, the keyword search is not present there. To achieve this functionality, we just need to add a small change in our code. To retain the search keyword, we need to pass the search query in the context, return to HTML, so that the HTML can show it. Now, the HTML can read the value from the word query 
and can show it in the search input box whenever page is loaded. Because the value attribute has the content parameterized. Let's restart our application and refresh our page. Now, if we search for any reader, the keyword searched is retained in the search field. Just like before, if we search for a different name, the corresponding record is displayed and the name is also shown in the search field. With this, we have built the search functionality to search any existing reader. We can extend this functionality to search based on any other fields of the reader data model, such as a reader ID, name, contact, reference ID or the address. The approach is the same. In the next chapter, we will learn how to implement the edit functionality for the readers. Thanks for watching this video. To continue learning with us, like, share and subscribe to our channel.